The next model is the model of Cloud Shannon and Warren Waver. Here are the persons behind this model, Cloud Shannon and Warren Weaver. The Shannon Weaver model was first proposed in the 1948 article, A Medical Theory of Communication, in the Bell System Technical Journal by Cloud Shannon and Warren Weaver. Shannon and Warren Weaver were born from United States. Cloud Shannon was a mathematician. Warren Waver was an electrical engineer. Many believe this mathematical theory of communication was mainly developed by Cloud Shannon alone and Warren Waver had a minimal role. It is often simply called the Shannon Information Theory in science disciplines. Shannon developed the theory to improve understanding of communication via telephone and eventually improve the quality of phones. The Shannon Weaver model mathematical theory of communication follows the concept of communication in a linear fashion from sender to receiver with the following steps. The Shannon Weaver model starts with the sender or information source. They are the person, object, or thing, or any information source who has the information to begin with. The information source starts the process by choosing a message to send, someone to send the message to, and a channel through which to send the message. A sender can send a message in a multiple different ways. It may be orally, through a spoken word, in writing, through body language, music, and many more. An example of a sender might be the person reading a newscast on the nightly news. They will choose what to say and how to say it before the newscast begins. The next step in the Shannon Weaver model is the encoder. The encoder is the machine or person that converts the idea into signals that can be sent from the sender to the receiver. The Shannon model was designed originally to explain communication through means such as telephone and computers which encode our words using codes like binary digits or radio waves. However, the encoder can also be a person that turns an idea into spoken words, written words, or sign language to communicate an idea to someone. The next step in the Shannon Weaver model is the channel. The channel of communication is the infrastructure that gets information from the sender and transmitter through the decoder and receiver. We sometimes also call this the medium. Example, a person sending an email in using the World Wide Web internet as a medium. A person talking on a landline phone is using cables and electrical wires as their channel. If we are face-to-face, -face, perhaps we don't have a channel except the sound waves from our voice that carry the sound from the sender's mouth to the receiver's ear. 
The next step in the Shannon Weaver model is noise. Noise interrupts a message while it is on the way from the sender to the receiver. It is named after the idea that noise could interrupt our understanding of a message. There are two types of noise, internal and external. Internal noise happens when a sender makes a mistake encoding a message or a receiver makes a mistake decoding the message. Here's the two points where it can happen. At the point of encoding, for example, when you misspell a word in a text message. At the point of decoding, for example, when someone misinterpret a sentence when reading an email. External noise happens when something external, not in the control of the sender or receiver, delays the message, so external noise happens. At the point of transmission through the channel, for example, when we are having conversation by a BC highway and the receiver is having trouble hearing over the sound of cars, one of the key goals for people who use this theory is to identify the cause of noise and try to minimize them to improve the quality of the message. Examples of external noise may include the cracking of a poorly tuned radio, a lost letter in the post, an interruption in a television broadcast, or a failed internet connection. Examples of internal noise may include someone having a headache so they can concentrate, someone speaking with a heavy accent, or when the sender numbers when speaking. The next step in the Shannon Weaver model is the coder. Decoding is the exact opposite of encoding. Shannon and Weaver made this model in reference to communication that happens through devices like telephones. So, in this model, there usually needs to be a device that decodes a message from binary digits or waves back into a format that can be understood by the receiver. If we are talking about direct communication between people without the use of technology, there will still be a need for decoding. For example, you might need to decode a secret message, turn written words into something that makes sense in your mind by reading them out loud, or may need to be interpret or decode the meaning behind the picture that was sent to you. Examples, um, decoders can include computers that turn binary packets of ones and zeros into pixels on a screen that make words, a telephone that turns signals such as digits or waves back into the sounds, and cell phones that also turn bits of data into readable and listenable message. The next step in the Shannon Weaver model is receiver. The receiver is the endpoint of the original Shannon and Weaver model of technical communication process. This is the step where the person finally gets the message or what's left of it after accounting for noise. The final step in Shannon Weaver model is feedback. Actually, the feedback step was not originally proposed by Shannon and Weaver in 1948. Norbert Wiener came up with the feedback step in response to criticism of the linear nature of the approach. Linear means that the message are only going one way. 
The Channel Weaver model of communication was originally proposed for technical communication, such as through telephone communications. Nonetheless, it has been widely used in multiple different areas of human communication. Here are some examples of how the Shannon Weaver model works. A telephone conversation. For example, the sender is the person who has made the call and wants to tell the persons at the other end of the phone call something important. The telephone turns the person's voice into a series of binary data, packages that can be sent down the telephone lines, and the channel is the telephone wires itself. Noise may occur if the speaker mumbles, the telephone wires are interrupted in a storm, or the telephone encoders decoders are malfunctioning. The telephone that the receiver is holding will turn the binary data packages it receives back into sounds that replicate the voice of the sender. The receiver will hear the sounds made by the decoder and interpret the message, and the receiver may speak in response to let the sender know what they heard or understood. Next one, listening to the radio. The radio host will speak into her microphone. The microphone and its computer will turn the voice of the radio host into pi binary packets of data that are sent to the radio transmitter. The radio transmitter, also part of the encoder, will turn that data into radio waves ready to be transmitted. The channel will be the radio waves that are sent out by the radio transmitter. Noise is most likely to occur if the receiver's transistor radio is not tuned to the correct frequency, causing static, or if the receiver's transistor radio is too far away from the radio transmitter. Deco the decoder is the receiver's transistor's radio, which will turn the radio waves back into the voice. The receiver is the person listening to the radio who will hopefully receive the full message loud and clear if noise has been avoided or minimized. And the feedback? Feedback is difficult in this step. However, the radio channel may send out researchers into the field to interview listeners to see how effective their communication has been. And the last one. A face-to-face -face discussion. Here, another example of how the Shannon and Weaver model of communication might work for human communication. The sender. The person starting the conversation will say something to start the communication process. The encoder step is usually used to explain a machine that encodes a message for transmission. For a face-to-face -face discussion, you could consider the encoding to be the ways the sender turns their idea into intangible words and sentences. Channel, there isn't any wire or radio waves involved here. Instead, the sound is transmitted through sound waves made by the voice. Noise, the sender may have mumbled or have an accent that caused the message to be distorted or the internal noise. So there might be a wind or traffic that made the message here hard to hear, and that is external noise. The decoder, while there's no machine here, the listener still has to turn the words they hear into legible message in their mind. And the receiver, the receiver is the second person in the conversation who the sender is talking to. And feedback, face-to-face -face communication involves lots of feedback, as each person takes turns to talk. If someone's message is not heard to noise due to noise, they can ask for clarification easily. 
The Shannon and Weaver model of communication has many pros and cons. So here are a few of them. It explains the barrier to effective communication very well. The Shannon Weaver information theory was revolutionary because it explains the concept of noise in details. It shows how information is interrupted and helps people identify areas for improvement in communication. For example, the model also includes three levels where communication can be interrupted. These are technical problems, semantic problems, and effectiveness problem. Technical problems, when the decoder, encoder, or channel causes the problems. For example, when a machine important for the communication of the message has a fault. Semantic problems, this is when the message what was sent is different from the message that was received. A practical way to think about this is the game telephone, also known as China's whisper or telephono roto. The message is lost somewhere in the retelling. Next one, effectiveness problems. This explains how well the message can cause a response or reaction from the receiver. Number two, it breaks down communication into tangible parts. The model enables us to look at the critical step in the communication of information from the beginning to end. Number three, transferable to multiple situations. The communication model was originally made for explaining communication through technological devices. However, it has been used to explain just about many forms of communication you can think of. Next, here are the disadvantages of this model. It's a linear model there is insufficient regard for feedback. The original 1948 Shannon Weaver blueprint did not contain the feedback component. When it was added by Weaver later on, it was included as a bit of an afterthought. Next, it doesn't account for power relationships. The model doesn't take a social scientific look at how information is interpreted differently based on power relationships or identities of those people communicating with one another. And the last one, it doesn't address one to many communication. The mother of all models is silent on the issues that arise when there is one sender and multiple receivers. For a better analysis of mass communication, use a model like last wall model of communication. To conclude this model, the Shannon Weaver model of communication is the mother of all models of human communication. It is also known as the information theory. It is a mathematical theory considered to be a linear communication model created by Claude Shannon and Warren Weaver. It is considered to be a highly effective communication model that explains the whole communication process from information source to information receiver. Again, if you have any question about this topic, please comment your name. We will address all your questions during our synchronous classes. If none, kindly click the thumbs up. Thank you.